the next speaker would be Asta. This is a uh, joint work with uh, Patrick Blackburn and uh, uh, Jorgen Vilatsen on formalizing uh, a Seligman style uh, uh, tableau system for hybrid logic. Yes, good. Yeah, so as you said, this is about formalizing a Seligman style tableau system. So now ST will stand for Seligman style tableau instead of standard translation. Uh, and we move to, to hybrid logic rather than, than regular modal logic. So it's a Tableau system STA for basic hybrid logic with a formalization in Isabel Hall. It's uh, 4,900 lines. It's an available in the archive of formal proofs. So it's based on a, a different system, ST star by Blackburn, Bolander, Poiner, and Janssen. And uh, so the, our short paper described work in progress. The work has since progressed. Uh, so I will show you the latest system here. Uh, this is only a short talk. So the focus will be on process and results and not the proofs. You can see the paper for, for more details. So what is hybrid logic? It is modal logic with names for worlds, so-called nominals. And for each nominal, we also have a satisfaction operator, which is this at symbol. I will use uh, X for propositional symbols, uh, A, B, C, I, J, and K for nominals. Then we have negation, we have disjunction, we have the diamond modality, and then we have these satisfaction statements. The semantics are based on crypto models. So we have some underlying set, we have a binary relation between them. We have a unary relation, and then we have this assignment G that maps nominals to worlds. So it basically tells us what world does this nominal name. So you may think of the nominals as propositional symbols that only hold at one world, namely the one that it names. And you may think of the satisfaction statements as shifting perspective from any world W to this world named by the assignment. How do we model this in Isabel? We give a deep embedding of the logic. So the syntax of our hybrid logic, it becomes a data type in the meta logic. So we have a constructor uh, for each case of the syntax and we can give the usual infix notation. We can also give other operators like the box modality as an abbreviation. The so semantics then becomes a function over this data type. Uh, we use uh, type variables, since so types are non-empty in, in high order logic, so we can use them to represent uh, the worlds, the propositional symbols, and the nominals. The relation becomes a function, so does the valuation, and the semantics are, as you expect, uh, given the, the former slide. But now we can talk about the logic in this formal language of high order logic, and we can verify properties about it. So to understand the Seligman style Tableau system, we first need to understand this notion of blocks. So formulas in hybrid logic, they are true relative to a given world. In the internalized calculus, as you see in figure A, where we deal with this by using only satisfaction statements. So every formula is prefixed by the satisfaction operator saying this is true at world I, or supposedly true at world I, or supposedly true at world J. In the Seligman style, we group formulas into blocks named by an opening nominal. And so we are uh, within a context until we explicitly go to a different context with a different or the same opening nominal. As you will see, this will mean that we can write down the rules in a very nice way. Uh, so we can naturally model blocks and branches. Uh, blocks are just lists of formulas coupled with an opening nominal and branches are just lists of blocks. So unlike uh, the previous work, we assume that the initial block is always named to obtain this simple modeling. So how do the rules look? There are 10 of them, including the closing condition. And one thing to be aware of here is that the horizontal line is the block separator. So it's, it's not the usual, usual inference uh, rule line. Instead, we uh, use these vertical lines to give the, the output of each rule. So you can, for example, consider the double negation rule. If the double negated phi occurs on an A block, 
the current block is an A block, then we may extend it with phi. And uh, we can use the diamond, uh, we can use the nominals to witness a diamond. So if we know that a diamond phi formula is true. We can come up with a fresh name, say I names this world where phi is true. It is reachable and phi is true at this world. Uh, similarly, the num rule allows us to copy a formula from a world B or a world denoted by B to a world A if the, this nominal, uh, these nominals name the same world. And uh, we put a restriction on this rule to only copy some, uh, some formulas to get, um, term, uh, get a terminating system. So what other restrictions do we put on the rules? So uh, these, these two first are taken from the work of, of Blackburn et al. So basically the output of a rule must include a formula that's new to the current block type so you can't just keep applying the double negation rule, for instance. And also the diamond rule can only be applied to some input diamond phi on an A block if, uh, if it is not already witnessed at this uh, type of block by these formulas for some witnessing nominal i. And we can lift these uh, restrictions. Oops. So we can basically show that the unrestricted rules are admissible in the system. Um, so the original R4 rule, uh, this allows applying go to twice in a row. We give a slightly more complicated rule, which is a restriction, which consumes one potential. And then the remaining rules add one unit of potential and we're allowed to start from any amount. So you can see an example in the figure down here in the right corner. Say we start from zero potential the regular rule application increases this. And then to apply go to, we need to consume one unit, unit of potential. So this uh, still rules out infinite branches consisting only of, of go to applications, but it does so without hindering induction over the construction of a, of a closed integral. Uh, our satisfaction rules, they are already single input uh, according to this original R5 restriction. And the num rule is restricted by the set of allowed nominals that I alluded to on the previous slide. So how do we formalize this? We can uh, we use this turnstile notation and give a predicate, which holds if the branch can be closed under some allowed set of nominals and under some potential n. So for instance, we, for each rule, we give, uh, we give a case. For instance, the closing condition says that if we have a formula at i, that is on an I block in the branch. We also have the negated formula on the same type of block. Well, then this branch closes. And we just list out the nine other rules and can then ver machine verify results like soundness. So if we have some closing, uh, closing to blow, the negation of P at some fresh, uh, and some fresh block I, which is, does not occur in P, well, then this is because uh, P is a valid formula. And uh, completeness, so we formalize a synthetic completeness proof, which uh, assuming that uh, we have an infinite number of, um, this is redundant nicely now, assuming we have an infinite number of, uh, of nominals available, well, then uh, if the formula P is valid, then the tableau of the negation closes on any block if we allow all the nominals in P and if we start from just a single unit of potential. So this is basically how we lift uh, the R4 restriction by saying, well, if any, uh, if a branch can be closed, then it can be closed starting from just a single unit of potential. Concluding remarks, so the nominals of hybrid logic that allow us to witness the diamond modality, giving very nice uh, rules for this operator. The Seligman style rules, they work on arbitrary formulas, so they're not prefixed. Uh, and they, they do this by having explicit perspective shifts from one block to another. We can model the logic and the proof system in Isabel Hall in a natural way as a syntax, uh, as a data type and the semantics as a function over this data type. And by doing so, we gain absolute trust in our results. So there can be no omissions and there can be no 
ambiguity. So the next step is to show that this uh, system is actually terminating. And then we want to verify a decision procedure that's based on the calculus. And I have an upcoming short presentation at uh, Advances in Modal Logic 2020, uh, which will go more into to the system and the proofs. So yeah, thank you for listening. Back to you, Andre. All right, thank you very much, Asta, for this nice presentation. Are there any questions? In the Q&A and in the, I'm not sure if I'm missing some hand raising. Let me start, let me start with, a, uh, with a question. So you, you have, in, in your group, you have done quite a few, um, you and your colleagues have done quite a few formalizations in Isabel of completeness theorems. Yes. I'm wondering, so, so um, is there any, any um, let's say, set of, of concepts and tools emerging that makes it easy to, uh, or convenient to formalize and prove uh, completeness theorems? Is there, is, there, is there some commonality there that we have identified and are, are looking into distilling it in a, in a set of Isabel tools? So distilling it would be nice. Uh, so the common theme is uh, this uh, synthetic approach uh, where you show that uh, the set of uh, derivable formulas or, or however, if it's reputational, the set of formulas from which you cannot derive false are consistent. And then you, you give a model existence result, existence result based on this. Uh, and that is how we usually approach it. Um, is there, is there a common uh, abstract uh, theorem lurking in there? Uh, I mean, so there are already fittings work on consistency properties, uh, which might you might be able to, to do some more abstraction based on that. Um, it's not something that we are actively looking into right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a very good question and a very obvious one. Thank you very much. Other questions? Okay, then I'm very happy that I can ask my second question. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it's nice that, that you, you present this at, at, at a modal logic conference. So uh, are, are you, are you um, in contact with, with this community? What is their feeling about uh, uh, formalizing uh, their results in proof assistance or, 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 or uh, acquiring this level of certainty about, about the results. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, we're here in the audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it does need some, some explaining of, of the benefits, and, uh, uh, but, I, but so far the, the reception has been very positive. Um, oh, so how do you how do you present? Is a short presentation. It advances model logic. It takes yes, ten yeah. minutes, or uh, I think I will have fifteen. I'm not sure. Yeah. So what's the elevator pitch? How do you present this? Uh, how how do you approach this uh, in a short time? So I mean, so when we usually present uh, logics, it's in uh, it's a natural language, and this uh, this opens up the way for for errors and ambiguities. Um, and we actually have tools today that allow us to, to represent the logic in, for instance, higher order logic, uh, such that the, that the machine can, can check our proofs and check our definitions. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, then I think, uh, I think there's value in that. All right. There is a question from uh, Angeliki. Please, Angeliki. No, I was mistaken. No, sorry. 